Bitcoin is great. It initiated a sea change in the way that money is used, transferred, and held. In addition, it circumvents the authority of central banks and allows for a degree of freedom that other forms of payment simply don't have. But it might be a trap. Satoshi Nakamoto, the founder of Bitcoin, is a mysterious figure and one who's never been definitively identified. But there's a theory floating around the internet about his name that might give a sense of who he is and what his goals were. If you translate the name Satoshi from Japanese to English, you'll discover that intelligent is one of its meanings. As for Nakamoto, we learn that it means central, or one who lives in the middle. That's not too far off from central intelligence, but maybe that's just word games, so let's dig a little deeper. Satoshi Nakamoto appears in 2007, but 11 years earlier, there's a paper published by the NSA called How to Make a Mint, the Cryptography of Anonymous Electronic Cash. Here, we find mention of electronic tokens and the need for secure payments. We read that the four requirements for such security are privacy, that means banks, credit card companies, or even the government can't see what you purchased, user identification, there has to be some way to verify that it's you who is making this purchase, and no one is stealing your identity to use your cash without permission. Message integrity. If I receive your payment, I need to know that you're the one who sent it, and that the payment you sent is the same as the one I received. Non-repudiation. There needs to be security for the recipient, so that once you pay me, and once I provide the good or service you requested, you can't simply withdraw the payment. These requirements, of course, are all met by Bitcoin, but the paper doesn't provide an outline of the technology that would ultimately become Bitcoin. It frequently highlights the work of David Chom, who created eCash, an early electronic payment technology. Some, skeptical of the NSA connection, just see this paper as a variant on some of David Chom's ideas. But the rabbit hole goes deeper. See, we know that the NSA was behind the creation of SHA-256. The SHA stands for Secure Hashing Algorithm. Hashing is defined by Simply Learn as the process of scrambling raw information to the extent that it cannot reproduce it back to its original form. So you put in your password somewhere and it's encrypted and stored as a hash. But the encryption is done in a way that nobody can tell from the hash what the original was. However, every time you input the original password, the same hash will emerge. SHA-256 is a secure hashing algorithm where no matter what the original input is, the hash value will always be 256 bits. It's incredibly secure and it's never been compromised. My Cryptopedia calls it an integral part of the Bitcoin protocol and it's used in mining, the creation of Bitcoin addresses and elsewhere. So we know that they're responsible for part of the technology and it seems like they were preparing for the rise of Bitcoin around two years before Nakamoto published his paper. According to Bitcoin.com, in 2005, leaks reveal that the NSA and Pentagon poured vast resources into supercomputers and expensive data facilities in Utah and Maryland. Reports claim that the Fort Meade NSA facility has 70,000 square feet of technical space, and the Utah Data Center has approximately 100,000 square feet designated for computers. Why would the government want to create a currency that's anonymous and decentralized? I mean, Governments are all about power, and money is one of the fundamental tools they use to maintain it. Well, that answer might be a bit simpler than you imagine. Let's say a branch or agency of the government wants to do something secretive or even illegal. They don't want any oversight. Well, in that case, they might find a technology like Bitcoin to be extremely useful. And Bitcoin is not exactly anonymous, thanks to Edward Snowden. We learned of a technology called Money Rocket, developed by the NSA. According to The Intercept, this software tracked Bitcoin users in the Middle East, Europe, and Asia by pretending to be something like a VPN. And the entirety of data passing through a network was examined and at least some entire data sessions were stored for later analysis. If you think that they haven't done this to American citizens, I've got a bridge to sell you. 